by joining our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, but you can also just go straight to Instagram at KSU Manners, and our link tree is in the bio. And thank you again for coming. I would like to pass it on to the bot for the occasion. Hi, everyone. So Dr. Martin Luther, uh, Luther King Jr. was born on January 15th, 1929 in Atlanta, Georgia, and passed away on April 4th, 1968 in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, Dr. King was a Baptist minister and social activist who led the civil rights movement in the United States from the mid-1950s until his death by assassination in 1968. His leadership was vital to the movement's success, which ended the legal segregation of African Americans in the South and other parts of the United States. Throughout his life, Dr. King rose to national prominence as head of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, which promoted nonviolent tactics such as the massive march on um, Washington in 1963 to achieve civil rights. As a testament to his work, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. Uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s work, including his world-renowned speech, has continued to make an impact to this very day. His legacy lives on through all who work towards equitable treatment for all peoples in this incre increasingly diverse world. Those who persevere, sacrifice, and show compassion towards others in order to allow freedom to, to ring, it is this legacy in Dr. King's work that we continue to honor today so that we may not be stagnant, but all of us here today will continue paving a path towards a better future for everyone. Therefore, to help us as multicultural students on this journey, we are pleased to have Mr. Baker here with us to share his take on the importance of Dr. King's dream. Now, I would like to ha hand it off to Lonnie Hobbs, Jr., our K-State Manners co-advisor. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Anika. Thank you, Shin, um, for that amazing welcome and occasion. I will now at this time introduce our speaker, Mr. Dave Baker, as always had a passion for working with people towards creating a better life. He has continued to exemplify the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King through his service in positions that have allowed him to help and lead people. A large part of his life of service has been the 35 years that he served as the collegiate athletics coach, including his time as head coach of the K-State baseball team from 1976 to 1984. He loved coaching because it gave him the opportunity to shape the lives of the younger generation and make a difference through his actions and his words. After years of coaching, Mr. Baker transitioned into the role of superintendent in Muscogee, Oklahoma for recreations in 1995, and he held that position until he took the position as the Manhattan, Kansas Douglas Community Center director in 2011. Mr. Baker has loved to watch the center grow over the years, especially because it means he is helping the community and the people in it. Additionally, his actions have been recognized throughout the Manhattan community as Mr. Baker and his wife, Sonia, received the 2019 Spirit of Martin Luther King Community Service Award for their commitment to uniting the diversity of the community for the greater good. Mr. Dave Baker has continued to live the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. through his actions and selflessness. And we are honored to have him here today to speak with us about the importance of Dr. King's dream. So now at this moment, please join me in welcoming Mr. Dave Baker. Thank you, Lonnie. <clears throat> It's an honor and privilege to speak today about Martin Luther King and his impact on my life. When uh, Dr. Wiley first asked me about doing this, you know, I kind of was, was reluctant. And uh, I haven't done a lot of speaking, you know, since I've gotten out of coaching and uh, didn't really want to talk a lot about myself. But uh, I want to thank Dr. Wiley, Assistant Dean uh, and Director of Diversity at the College of Agriculture, the College of Agriculture her staff and the M-A-N-N-R-S organization for inviting me to do this. It's truly an honor uh, to be here today and to speak. Um, I told my wife, Sonia, that uh, Dr. Wadi had asked me to do this and, and, uh, and I was reluctant to do it at first. And, and she said, well, it's something that you probably, you need to do. So, but she's also said, you know, if you do, 
make sure you have a good beginning and a quick ending and you'll be fine. So with that, uh, I will try to do that and, and, and just share a little bit with you about uh, my life and, and what's gotten me to where I am today and, and what I've been about my entire life. I was born and raised here in Manhattan. I was one of nine children. I was number six. And uh, our parents stressed hard work and education. Uh, dignity and self-worth were at the forefront. Being colored back then as, as we were growing up, the reference of our race has changed over the years. I don't believe there's been any other ethnic group uh, that had a description that has changed as much as ours. In the 40s and 50s, we were colored. In the 50s and 60s, we were Negroes. In the 70s and 80s, we were black. And now today, we're black African-Americans or people of color. I don't, this is a life of descriptions of, of being a minority. I don't know of any other group that the description of, the, of them has changed as, as much as we have as African-American people. Have you ever wondered how you got to where you are today in life? I believe that God puts you where he wants you to be if you let him. We must learn to be still, listen, and do God's will. As I look back over my professional career, I had a dream as a young boy of becoming a college baseball coach after playing baseball at K-State and Emporia State. Dr. King had a dream for me, and that dream allowed me to be a successful, uh, have 32 years of successful years in college athletics. I never thought I would be able to do that, but that's what happened and it's been wonderful. God put me at every stop, eight of them to be exact. So I've lived in eight different places along the way. And if you're in athletics, that's just, that's part of athletics. Without knowing why, <clears throat> Dr. Martin Luther King, a man of God too, put him in many stops. And he too did not know without asking why. I watched and I listened and, I, and it impacted my life. I heard many speeches of Dr. King. I was the first black baseball, head baseball coach at a division one college at Creighton University in 1972 and later here at K-State in 77 to 84. As the first and only black head coach in the big eight at that time, which is now the big 12, there still has not been any other black baseball coaches in, 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 uh, in the Big 12. I'd also like to commend K-State for the fact that they're the only power five school, as we say today, that has had a head black baseball coach, a head basketball coach, Daryl Winston, who took over for Coach Hartman when he was, uh, when he was ill. And of course, we had Ron Prince, a head football coach. And today, I do believe we have a black tennis coach. So K-State has done its due diligence in giving uh, black coaches opportunities to coach. When I was coaching, I didn't coach to be, I was coaching to, to, be, uh, to win games and championships, uh, not just because I was the first. I had great mentors, both black and white. There was Dr. Claude Oregon, the first African-American director of surgery at Creighton University that took me under his wings and encouraged me to take a stand when you know you're right and speak up. That was, that was probably, Dr. Oregon was probably the most important uh, mentor in, in my career. You can't go to college and get a degree in coaching. Usually you play the game and after your eligibility is over, you can become an assistant coach. And after as an assistant coach, you become a head coach. You become a head coach. That was happened for me. I was fortunate, very fortunate, to play for the legendary for legendary coaches, Coach Jack Hartman, who was a head coach here at K State. He was my coach in junior college in Coffeyville. Eddie Sutton, who was in the basketball hall of fame today, coach at Oklahoma State, and and hired me at Creighton. He was the one that really gave me the first opportunity to coach at the, the Division One level. Not only, and Larry Cochelle was my, my coach at Emporia State, my baseball coach. And I ended up coaching again with him after I left K-State and, and uh, went to Oklahoma and I coached at Oral Roberts with, with, back with him again. 
not only were they great men, mentors on how to play and, and, and coach the game, they also taught me how to work with people outside the game. And that, that experience was mentoring was just monumental in my career. The opportunities to coach at the major level does not happen without the sacrifices made by Dr. King. In 1968, after Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated, life for African-Americans changed dramatically, dramatically. White America began hiring Blacks to positions that were never open to them before. Despite being qualified and at times more qualified prior to his death, I know this personally, as this was my case in being given the opportunity to coach in College Ram. The effects of Martin Luther King's death in America was just unbelievable. Today, I look at the landscape of college and professional sports, and I see more minorities in positions never seen before. Directors of athletics, coaches, referees, team owners in professional sports, TV announcers, hockey players, NASCAR. I think if you remember just this past year, uh, Bubba Wallace uh, won the first big race for, for, for Black and NASCAR. It's just amazing the things that have happened since Dr. King was assassinated. And in a non-athletic world, we see more doctors, lawyers, scientists, and even the president of the United States. For me, this is the impact that Dr. King has had on our country and the world after his death. In my mind, no other, no other man in my life has made, has had an effect on this country like Dr. King. <clears throat> you know, sometimes we don't realize the importance of history until we've lived long enough to see and feel the impact personally. His march, his words, his peaceful marches stood for civil rights for all. I believe I never would have had the opportunity to become a head coach at a Division One college if Dr. Martin King did not make the ultimate sacrifice for the people he so dearly loved, both black and white. He did not know me personally, but he knew many people like me trying to make a difference in other people's lives. His impact was the opening, the opening those doors, striving for civil rights for all. I believe today's society has become all about me and not enough about us. That mindset makes success more difficult and an inclusive world harder to obtain. Dr. King had a dream and fought for us, not I. I would like to share my life's toolbox that I always carry with me each and every day. And if you don't have a, a life's toolbox, think about creating one. And what's in a life's toolbox? These are things that you take with you each and every day to try to help make the world a better place. Number one, do something each day to try to make someone else's life just a little bit better. That little bit will turn into a lot for you. If you don't use it, you'll lose it. Each of us are given talents and ability. God gave everybody some talent. You've got to learn what that talent is and use it to the best you can. Or you can give up, you can give it in, or you can give it all you got. There's no saying that if you rest, you rust. And that is so true. I've seen people just quit and not be able to continue to do what they were possibly able to do. Number four is we don't get old because we're playing. We get old because we stop playing. And so number five would be keep playing, have fun, help others as much as you can. Now look at the world. You have the gift to keep the dream alive. I would like to say to young folks today, <clears throat> Dr. Martin Luther King's sacrifices are the reasons we enjoy so many of the opportunities that we 
that we have today. If you were young and not around at the time he was assassinated, you may not feel what I feel because I remember very vividly that night I was at Emporia, in Emporia, at Emporia State. And this country, it just came to a standstill the night that he was assassinated. And then there was many, many, many terrible things that happened in this country thereafter. But in the end, as we know today, his legacy still stands, his, uh, and, and we're still continuing to grow from that legacy. And I would just like to share with young people, even though you weren't there, what he sacrificed was what, he's, what, was what we have today. So realize his sacrifices were for you, even though it happened 54 years ago, April 4th, 1968. I truly believe that I know I would not be visiting and sharing this with you tonight had Martin Luther King not sacrificed the things that he did for this country and for our, for our people. I'm just so thankful. I'm just so thankful that I'm able to share and, and let you know that things are going to get better and they are getting better, but it is never easy. But if you don't keep up the fight, it just won't happen. So as I said, you can give up, give in, or you give it all you got. And to this day, each and every day, I feel like I, I just have to give it all I have. And with that, I give that to Dr. Martin Luther King because he made a difference in my life and in his world. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Summer, I'm not sure if the audio is working. I think you're still on mute. I was unmuted, but the microphone was off, so I very much apologize for that. Let me represent you with that, Mr. Baker. I'd like to say thank you on behalf of K-State Manners, the Diversity Programs Office, and the K-State College of Ag for you coming today to share your wisdom with us and what Dr. King's sacrifice has meant to you and how you've been able to take that sacrifice into your own life and just use it to help others throughout everything that you've done. So in appreciation of you coming to speak with us today, I'd like to present you with this certificate of appreciation from K-State Manners and the College of Ag Diversity Programs Office. Thank you, so thank you so very much, I appreciate this. And then I would like to ask the audience if there are any questions for Mr. Baker. Okay, well, if there are none, thank you so much for your story. And I would like to pass it along to Brandon Green, the president of the K-State Manners chapter. Hello everyone. Uh, Summer, isn't the uh, announcement stuff supposed to pop up or? I will share the flyer, one moment. All right. <laughs> Uh, 
Again, we'd like to thank everyone for your uh, participation. As we wait on that, Dean Mitten, I saw you here. Was, did you like to, uh, did you have any comments? I thought. I... Yeah, see, I'm here. Okay. I thought I saw you trying to unmute or something. I wasn't sure. But while we wait on that, you're open. I mean, you're welcome to speak. Well, sure. Thank you very much. And uh, Mr. Baker, thank you so much for sharing your experiences. Uh, I know they mean so much, uh, not only to the uh, young people who are part of Manners, but also uh, to those of us who are on the faculty and, and are, are helping to uh, support students as they uh, come through through K-State. Um, uh, and I, I do appreciate uh, uh, the Manners chapter and the D diversity programs office for identifying you as a speaker. Thank you so much on Thank behalf you. of the college and uh, K-State Research and Extension. Appreciate that. I'm curious, uh, where was K-State playing baseball when you uh, first became associated with the program? We were still at the, we were at the, at the field now, but uh, we didn't have turf. And we didn't have a press box and we didn't have <laughs> many things if we amenities that I see there today. Was it it, it was in the same location as it is currently? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. That field was built in 1964. Oh. And uh Bob Brazier, or Coach Wather was the coach back then. Bob Brazier took over. And I played for K State in 1966. So the second year for that field. And uh, of course at that time there was nothing in that area, but the field. No football field, no houses. It was country. And so I can uh, imagine. Yeah. It's come a long, long way. Thank you. Yes, and I just wanted to give a great thank you to you as well. And uh, as we wrap this up, I just uh, would like everyone to either do a clap of hands or show some form of respect or gratitude for our speaker to coming out tonight. Um, and I'll give a think of announcements. Uh, so <clears throat> later this week on Friday, uh, we'll be doing a Dr. Martha Lee King Jr. Uh, Lang of the Reef. And then uh, leading into February, we'll be uh, we'll have a College of Agriculture resume workshop that will be on the 9th of February. So make sure to put that down in your calendar, as well as our corporate showcase for Manners, which is going to be the 16th. Um, and my bad, I skipped it. The KSRE application deadline is the 8th. And then uh, we'll also have a Growing Our Mindset with all the organizations with the College of Ag uh, on the March of 8th. Uh, so make sure to also put that down in your calendar. Um, and... We'll also have some other stuff. So pretty much put all these down in your calendar and I'll go ahead, give it off to Dr. Wiley and Dr. Um, Dan Moser to give us a uh, sign out. Thank you, Brandon. So Dr. Moser, uh, before you, I see Adam Carr here and I want to know, Adam, would you like to give us an update on the Martin Luther King activities for the rest of the week? Maybe he left. Okay, well, I would like to share, we have a, um, we're always so proud that K-State can, the College of Agriculture can kick off the week. And so what we have in store for all of you is tomorrow, we will have the Commerce Bank Award. On Thursday, we'll have the Martin Luther King um, presidential luncheon. And then Friday, the affinity groups will get together at 1130. That is the Black Faculty Staff Alliance, uh, the Indigenous Alliance for Faculty and Staff, the Asian Faculty and Staff Alliance, as well as our um, Hispanic Latino Alianza, that faculty and staff group. And then at 130, we'll have the Land of the Reef. Everything due to COVID, and the global health pandemic, we are doing everything virtually. So we really hope that you can tune in from your couch, from your dorm room, from your office to participate in all these great activities. So Dr. Moser, I'd like to turn it over to you. Yeah, just real briefly, Dr. Wiley, thank you. I 
I really appreciate Coach Baker taking the time to be with us this evening and for sharing his story and his perspective on, on Dr. King's legacy. I want to thank the Manor students and commend them on their efforts organizing the event tonight and to thank Dr. Wiley and Lonnie Hobbs for their mentorship and, uh, of the Manor's chapter. Appreciate the many K-State students, faculty, and staff that joined this evening uh, to be part of, the, of, of this event. You know, one of the joys of being part of a university community is events like this and the reflections and conversations among us that follow afterward. And so, uh, and the last thing that I'll just say is to our students, uh, I challenge you to, to follow Coach Baker's example, that he is, has been someone who has made a huge impact on, on his community and, and both now your time in the K-State community and in the communities that you join in the future as you go on into your careers. I, I challenge you to, to make a difference and to serve the, the communities where you live in the future. Uh, Coach Baker has been a great example of that here in Manhattan and, and we, just, we just treasure him and, and thank him for all he's done here. I agree. Thank you so much, Dr. Moser. And um, Mr. Baker, just thank you so much for saying yes. I just really appreciate, I knew you you had the great story. You can touch our students. I hate that it is virtual. I would love for the students to meet you one-on-one. -on -one. And we do plan at a later time to come to the Douglas Center to present your certificate and our token of appreciation to you. And the students will be there. So we'll just make sure that um, we'll get with you and your schedule. And I would could not end this without thanking Sonia Baker. Sonia, <laughs> thank you so much for helping us and getting with Mr. Baker. And, you know, it's very true. Behind every great man, there's a great woman. And so, Sonia, we appreciate you so much. We really do. So without further ado, um, please, please watch your Instagram or your emails for the rest of the week's activities. Again, it's all virtual, but we have all our, our Zoom IDs for you to look at. I'll definitely get emails out. And again, if we don't have any questions, Mr. Baker, you are a jewel for the community and we thank you for sharing your light today. We thank appreciate you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody have a good evening. Stay warm as the weather changes on us. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night.